Welcome to the show, Janda Bacanda, my good friend, my dearest friend, Steph Cadenhead. Um, Stephanie and I were friends back in Boston. We were young financial advisors in the early 2000s and the early noughties, as they said, and we were very naughty back then. Um, she's my go-to girl for um, coffee runs, happy hour, uh, barbecue, you name it, Steph is my girl. All right. When we want to talk about work, I talk to Steph. When I want to talk about not work, I talk to Steph. So um, since then, since those early 2000s, Steph and I have been married and divorced. Um, and today we're going to talk about some things that can be a bit of an issue for, for us as divorcees, which uh, may or may not matter, but it matters to us sometimes. Um, and that's post-divorce etiquette. And these yeah, entails the scope of what are the things that are appropriate between us and our friends and our exes, right? And I can't think of a better chick with the most killer sense of humor, the most like dead on common sense than Steph Huber to discuss this. And this is going to apply universally because this girl's killer. All right. So Steph, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. And you use Stephanie Cadenhead and Stephanie Huber. I love it because I'm going to go by both names. <laughs> oh my God. I did. I did. I. That's oh. quite all right. I love it. All right. So, because you know what? It brings me back to the time that we did work together and we had a blast. We really did. We oh, worked hard and we had a blast. Yeah. Yes, I know. Um, and where are those clients today? You know what? It's okay. <laughs> the experience They're doing is, great. They're doing we great. Laid the, <laughs> we that's laid the right, actually. plan. <laughs> actually, that's true. Actually, that's that's a very good point. Um, and if they continued with what we told them to do, they'd be fantastic by now. They're fantastic, yes. And <laughs> I would have never got through it without you there. So I am so grateful that I met you, honestly. Amen. Likewise, sweetheart. Likewise. So what's the first subject that we want to talk about? Um, I definitely want to talk about social media interactions. Um, mm. That's definitely one thing. And yeah. I think that's that's the primary primarily like big one because today's world we're not void of social media presence and I don't know about you but between me and my ex we have about a thousand mutual contacts between across all the different social media platforms wow uh, yeah and including LinkedIn so it's not exactly like you know hey um, I'm a former COO and also divorced now and not, no longer associated with my ex, which is like all over my LinkedIn. So <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. That really is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's, it's different because there's, there's no, there's no wall there that can, and you really can't just block someone from that. But, um, Let's talk about the fun stuff or yeah. the not so fun stuff like Instagram. <laughs> All right. Uh, the reason why I had this um, idea for this show, this episode, is because my ex posted a picture of our children, um, mm. whom, are, whom are the boys are with my ex husband. And we have some mutual friends who knew some personal details about the circumstances of our separation and are still surprisingly liking his photos. Um, interesting. Interesting, right? And I was like, well, that skinny little <laughs> no good for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right? Tell so, me more. Yes. Well, that's exactly it. And, and um, I find that the ones who actually um, make these, I don't know if they're trespasses really, are mainly women. 
I find that the mutual friends who are men steer clear of it. And in fact, they are pretty uh, consistent about where they stand uh, on either one, either side of the fence. Um, yeah, and so I don't know. How do you feel about that? I find that extremely interesting be only because I've noticed it with other people as well that um, through social media, I will see, I have other friends who are divorced mm -hmm. and I've seen their ex-spouses post something online um, that is either appropriate as far as, like you said, posting pictures of kids or inappropriate as far as posting degrading stuff or personal stuff about what's going on about their situation. And I do find that there's a lot more women that will participate in it than men do. Mm. But I sit back and I say it's because women are way more opinionated and women seem to be more present on social media than men are. Mm. And so I wonder if that's why um, or just the fact that um, – I don't know. I mean, my ex-husband and I have have quite a few mutual friends, definitely not as much as you and your ex-husband. Mm. Um, you know, I think it's different where you two were in business together. You had a life together. You had a lot of, of mutual right. happenings there that, you know, brought a lot of the same people into your life. On my situation, I feel like we we were really not only were we married, but we were very good friends, too. Mm. And we hung out together. We, mm. we had fun together. We integrated family, friends, all of that stuff. And so... Um, you were blended. But I am yeah. Very blended. Very blended. Right. right. And um, so then it's, you know, it's interesting with the dynamic of what happens after you get divorced. Mm -hmm. I'm much more present on social media than he is. Okay. So fortunately, I don't have to deal with that so much on my end mm -hmm. but we do remain very civil now and mm -hmm. so if he were to post pictures of our kids you know I'm commenting I'm liking it um if say, vice versa if I'm posting something about our kids where he's okay. commenting he's liking it um and we try to be very respectful mm -hmm. as far as not putting any of our dirty laundry out there um mm -hmm. I feel like our friends have been very respectful and I love that. Um, I don't, it, and it, it, I think it really depends situation to situation. I have a friend who was divorced and when her ex posts stuff, um, it's hurtful stuff. And for a while I stayed friends with him because I didn't want to rock the boat between them. I felt like if I made a comment or if I took him off my social media, it was very obvious Mm -hmm. And, but what I also noticed is women would be commenting saying, great job. You're doing so good. Mm -hmm. You know, glad you got out of that toxic relationship. Oh, and I know the other side of what? it. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know the other side of it. And I just sit back and I'm like, oh, these women, these women don't not cool, do ladies. that. No, not cool. Not cool. <laughs> well, not cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's hope we don't meet those ladies today. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a perfect example, actually, of how I don't know if that's considered just plain out rude or just thoughtlessness and carelessness on some people's part and when they're making comments like that, um, or they're used to just liking pictures of our kids, or that, you know, like, they're just used to liking their friends' posts, you know. It's yeah. just a matter of habit that they don't really have. It's far from malice. It's like, you know, yeah. We go, through our, we go through our social media feed so quick, and then, you know, we like and not like, go go through, scroll through things so quickly, you know. Um, I, do re I do realize that it's not, in, in, it, it's not a super big deal in, in the greater scheme of things. 
But when I see it, it does make me pause for a second and does make me think oh, of yes. like, hmm, what's going on here? What was the thought behind that? And of course, even that was a little bit already overthinking things, um, I must admit. At that point, sorry, we're thinking things. But um, along with other things, you also mentioned now that you and your ex are civil. So there was a time when things were still raw and things weren't Ooh. so easy. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. All right. So what are some of the post-divorce etiquette that's like not social media between you and your ex that you're now able to talk about that I mean, you wish that was you skipped certain chapters you know that was a waste of time what what were some of the post divorce etiquette things there that you wish happened sooner i guess um i think making sure that each other were mentally stable um financially stable and i'll say economically stable because it comes down to Let's both make sure the kids are taken care of so that we both can be at work and be present within our day so that we're getting our job done and feeling like we're at least able to accomplish our lives outside of what's going on at home, you know? Um, yeah. When things were raw, that was a huge problem. I felt like everything was on my shoulders mm -hmm. and simply I'm the one that wanted the divorce. So it was kind of his way of saying, oh, you think you can do everything on your own, here you go. It affected, it affected a lot of things in my life at that time. I could hold on to that anger, um, mm -hmm. but it doesn't serve anybody by doing that. Um, so, you know, I feel like just etiquette all around of just check yourself. There's a lot more people involved than just the two of you. So you got to find a way to, to be whole all around, I feel. See, this is why I love this girl. This is why I love this girl. <laughs> she's not a Zen master. She's not a guru, but like, she's mm -hmm. so dead on common sense. Like, let go. Let go of that crap. Please. I'm too fabulous. Uh, and now you're divorced. Right. <laughs> divorced and enjoying your. <laughs> so fabulous. <laughs> but also, I mean, really, it will. It will just bring you down. And you don't want your kids to see that side of it, really. So, and what's the point of ha having gotten the divorce if, if you're only going to be even more miserable um, for holding on to the anger? Is what you said. Absolutely. And, um, you choose to do that, which you haven't because you've taken the high road. Yeah. <laughs> it took me a long. So it took me a while to get there, though. I will say that. <laughs> Well, that's that's part and parcel of the divorce chapters. I mean, there there's definitely the raw chapter is definitely going to be there. So I definitely acknowledge that. Um, yeah. So congratulations. And I that. thank you. And I will make a point that some situations are a lot more dire than others. So it takes a while to get through that storm before you can get to the other side and be more cordial and civil and all that, um, you know? Um, and so I think everyone has their own timeline for how they get there. And it's just a matter of getting there so that you can become a better person. Mm, okay. What worked for you in terms of letting go and getting your um, headspace in the right place? Ooh, well, <laughs> I know that um, with, in my specific situation with my ex, he responds better to being nice to him. And so if I held on to the anger and if I kept being mean to him, we would get absolutely nowhere. His stamina is is much stronger than mine. So he can hold a grudge for a long time and he can go out of his way to, uh, to keep it going. I don't have that energy. I really don't. And I know he would beat me in that. I know he totally would. So it's one of these things where I just say to really be able to get 
out of the situation, what I need to have happen. It's I, I need to take that high road and just um, kind of go with the flow, but also know that I have a purpose in that too. And so I can guide it more to my purpose. Um, also, it's the space that's there too. We're not in each other's faces anymore. So when we do have an argument, we can end the conversation, cool down for a little bit and say, okay, things are calm. Let's get back oh together and talk God, about yeah. this again. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even that point right there alone is gold I mean can you imagine in quarantine right now with your ex oh no no, no. and I, hey, I do hey, have a not, not to say yeah this is not just to say about your ex or my ex it's because we re realize the nature of the relationship that tension has already accumulated so much Oh. that it, the triggers are over nothing. It could be about toilet paper. It could be about eggs. <laughs> it could be, it's nothing. It takes nothing. It's like right. TNT, like ignite, poof, like just but, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh, the one thing that I sit in, I praise the Lord of thank you for getting me out of this before this whole quarantine thing happened. Yeah. That's, that makes a difference. It does. It really, really does make a difference. The other question that I have, what is your take on dating your ex's friends? Definitely not happening. <laughs> 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 not happening. Okay. Not um, happening. It's possible that's because of maybe selection issues <laughs> or... <laughs> Mm, that's 50% of it, yes. <laughs> and the other 50% is like, still, no, thank you. Um, tin yes. Tinder and uh, Bumble are still open. We, I, I, could, I could check those still. There are so many other people out there to date. And yeah. honestly, on my end, I am past everything, but I would be extremely upset if any of my friends started dating my ex. Very upset. Yeah, I'm not actually. I'm actually, I'm actually at the point where um, he is, or my ex is already dating again. He's told me that he's going to be moving in with somebody else. So, oh uh, yeah, I know. But that may bother Chris, Stephanie more than it does it does me because okay, I'm at a different place of letting go, um, and that's. For, and that actually happened to me earlier on, before the divorce, um, or during oh. the or during the divorce process, and that that helped release me from because I didn't want to have an emotional or psychological bond that sort of held us together. You know, yes, we spent many years together, um, but that chapter closed. It. it it physically, spiritually, legally, it ended. That that chapter is done. You know, the one thing that it continues on is in our children, and that's the only thing that matters to me in terms of my continued relationship with my ex. Um, yeah, I mean, has he dated any of my friends? I don't know if he has or whether he's asked. It won't be a surprise to me in the least if he does. Maybe some of those chicks that keeps on liking his pictures. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, is this person he's moving in with, is this one of your friends? But it sounds like it might not be. I have no idea who the, that person is. I don't, I don't know her from the first thing. I don't know her name. I don't know her face. I don't know. I don't know where she lives. Wow. <laughs> Girl, the woman that I know where that woman lives, that's a different story, right? I was just going to say, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, Do I need to find out? Do I need oh. to find out? <laughs> no, don't worry. The quarantine's good for many things. Yes. <laughs> it allows a very, very much 
much-needed cooling-off period. Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so, anything else that you want to add to that? to any of the post-divorce etiquette things that you want to add. So it's it's cool on the social media platform, I guess, kind of. Maybe some people just don't mean it or just stay out altogether. But you do make a stand, though. You said you did unfriend one, one ex-husband friend um, because you picked a side, essentially. Um, because he had said something hurtful. So the moment that you see some someone being hurtful to another, you did make a decision on where you were going to stand about that. And the only reason that became an unfriending situation is you would bring the divorce on to social media. And I am very good friends with his ex, and I tried to remain friends with both. Um, but once you start bashing the person that I love, it becomes a problem. Yeah. And uh, yeah. yeah. So, and that's just not cool, um, right? at that point, no, it's really not. I mean, people don't know your situation. They don't yeah. need to know your situation. Right. It's between the two of you. A lot of times divorce is just because um, you both just a good match anymore. It doesn't mean that anyone really did anything wrong. Um, and so, I don't know, just to bring that stuff on social media is crazy. But I will say it, it does become a tough situation when you have a lot of multiple friends. It's who stays friends with who? Mm -hmm. Because really, can you, can you remain friends with both without eventually having an opinion and figuring out, you know, where, where you stand? And so I do have... Um, friends that, that I started out with that mm. became very good friends with both of us mm. that now is is still my friend and and I appreciate that um, I don't want them to completely exclude my ass but at the same time I do appreciate that I'm not really making an effort to hang out with them and you know do things with them rather than I want out with them, do things with me <laughs> Right. Um, but there are some friends on the other side of it that were friends with him first that I remained friends with only because we had such a bond. Mm. Um, I, you know, we have other mutual friends that, um, they, they were great friends. I loved hanging around with them, but we didn't have such a bond that once the divorce happened, it's kind of, I'm, I'm letting that friendship go. Not because I don't like them, not because I don't want to be friends, but it's just not my place to be their friend right now. And, um, you know, I think they're better served being friends with him right now, too. So, mm -hmm. wow. it's oh, just you're tough so thoughtful. all around. <laughs> you're thoughtful. You're being thoughtful to his feelings, your ex's feelings, your ex's needs, that he needs friends at this moment. God, you know, you got to love stuff. You got to love stuff. I feel like at some point, it, you know, I feel like at some point we loved each other. And at some point right. we wanted each other's best, you know, at the forefront and trying to keep that going. However, mm. if this were 20 years ago, back in the 2000s when we were working together, mm, it would have been a different story. <laughs> But even I was then, you were headed back then. <laughs> um, you may have thought that you were um, more hot-headed than you are today. But even then, you were never malicious. You were never malicious. You were very, very thoughtful. Even then, um, you could like think. Thanks. But you're also you were then very quick to also call out a situation for what that was. Like so, if somebody was being unfair or unjust to you or to somebody else, you were very quick to call that out, to, to spot that out. Not just to spot it, but you also, you call it out and and call it for what it is, really. So that's, I think, um, you have remained sort of level in terms of your, I don't know, social norms, you know, like you're kind of sane throughout, you know, not too much fluctuations in it. 
<laughs> Divorce or otherwise. <laughs> Right. Um, so I guess we covered, we covered most of it. I mean, like, I think that's, I, you know, other than that, we're kind of like enjoying rebuilding our new lives as, um, divorcees or the term, the Indonesian term for it is janda. So that's, that's why the name of the podcast, janda Bajanda. So, and we are oh. two janda. We are two jandas jo- joking right now. So that is janda Bajanda. So that's exactly what we're doing right now. So. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it too. So I will <laughs> keep you because I know it's a work night for you. You have work tomorrow morning, right? Yeah, okay. Yes, I do. And it's late at night in Boston. I pray that you stay safe and your family also. And be good, be safe. And I can't wait to hug you again when traveling is permitted and I can come to the United States. I want to hug you again. Thank you. And I hope your family is safe too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I would love to see you again. I hope we can make that happen. Oh, amen. Amen. From your lips to God's ears. Okay. So everybody that was Steph Cadenhead, not yeah. Steph Huber, um, Steph Cadenhead, <laughs> although she is both. And I loved having you in the show and we're going to have her back. We're going to talk about more stuff, more Denda stuff because she's the gal that we trust, all right?